Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity Inc. Today I'm at One of a Kind Antique Mall on Wilson Street. It's not that place, it's that. That entire factory is now an antique mall. Apparently it's the largest in Canada. From the size of it, I would say it probably is. I was just talking to one of the owners and this building opened in 2001. It's three stories. I don't know how many square feet it is. I'll ask them that when I talk to them again. But I just walked in the front door and already I'm seeing all kinds of stuff that's fantastic value. Um, from old Coke signs to wristwatches to all sorts of other antiques. We're really gonna have a little browse here and see what we can find. Some nice vintage mechanical wristwatches. And the price point's not bad, $29 for a mechanical wristwatch. Um, automatics for about 70 or 80. You know, those back home, that'd be about uh, half of what they're typically selling for in my area. They seem to have a little bit of everything from antiques to Western wear, cowboy boots and moccasins. I think that if a person has a interest in uh, selling their wares, whatever it might be, you can rent a booth from a place like this and uh, sell whatever you like. That's usually how the antique malls work. So that's why every single booth is completely different. And certain vendors can put sales on things and others may not. It gives you a nice bit of diversity, but you never know what these folks are out finding and what they might put in their booth. So you have to check each and every one, which judging by the size of this place, might take a while. Now that's an unusual little kid's tricycle. That's the Mattel X-15. It's sort of meant to look like a little space bike. You would have controlled it with the tiller rather than a steering wheel. Kind of like a really early crazy big wheel. Um, not in great condition. You can imagine if this was under the tree when you were a kid, it must have looked like it came right off the surface of the moon and landed in your home. Um, price point on that, $295. Now this is kind of neat. What they've done is they've got the Coke push bar on the screen door. They've got another push bar at the top and the screen door itself, they're selling as a whole package for $595. The push bar is worth about, and this is Canadian prices, the push bar is worth about 350. That one's worth about the same. So I guess if you buy the uh, two push bars, it's like you get the door for free. Now here's something kind of cute. It's a battery operated toy forklift that would have actually moved backwards and forwards. You could move the, the forks up and down. It was fully articulated. Now, whether this thing works or not, it's another story, but that's a pretty intricate piece. It's almost the same kind of deta detail that you'd see on a salesman sample. And I have a salesman sample forklift at my shop right now. Um, that is a really interesting little item. Asking price, $75. You can always tell the personality of the vendor by what they carry. This person has vintage clothes, footwear, um, not sure some of it would work with what I've got going on today, but um, you know, it's the variety that makes an antique mall interesting. And no matter what you're looking for, you're bound to find something in a place like this. I've noticed in a few of these booths, there's a lot of radios. Now that's a Crosley dashboard. That is a desirable style of radio. That one's not in very good shape. One down below, there's not bad. 295, that's about retail on that. So there's no room for me. But if I'm lucky, I might be able to find one that's an early form of plastic called Catalan. And if that's the case, that would be a good find. This is kind of a neat one. It's a 40s, I think it's, they, they have it labeled as a Lumitone, but it's a lamp and a radio and it looks like a rocket ship. Um, I don't think that's the best shade for it. I think a nice sort of spacey mid-century mid shade would be cool on that. But that is an unusual piece and that is the sort of thing I'm looking for. Um, I just have to decide whether it's $300, what, what I'm looking for or not. Um, pretty cool piece though. You definitely don't see rocket shaped radio lamps too often. And I just kind of double checked online to see what they go for. You can get a Lumitone lamp in good shape for around $215, $220. So that would have been a bad investment. So it's always good to double check things before you buy. This fellow is clearly into his Redline Hot Wheels. Condition looks generally pretty good on a lot of those. He's even got the somewhat more rare and obscure, I think those are the, uh, those are the uh, agent release boxes that Mattel would have sent out. Lots and lots of selection. Now I don't have a bat boat. 
But when I get one, I'm going to find one that's mint in box. That one's got a broken windshield. But that is on my list of things I'm looking for myself. So maybe I'll find a bat boat here today. An assortment of jewelry here. It looks like the fix and clean and repair antique jewelry. It's one area that I don't know as much about. My wife, Melissa, is more of an expert when it comes to jewelry. Her family owns a jewelry store. So that's more up her alley. She can spot a good ring a mile away. When I proposed to Melissa, and I didn't have a ring right off the bat, that's the first mistake. I proposed to her without even having a ring. Um, eventually when I got her a ring and she said yes, and all those good things happened, uh, and we saw her grandma for the first time uh, after the engagement happened, her grandma not only said, oh, isn't that nice, but she pulled a loop, like a, a professional loop out of her purse and checked to see what kind of clarity ring I bought her. Whew, total pressure there. <laughs> Of an interesting little piece. It's an antique children's piano. And does it work? Yes, it does. Schoenhut must be German. Kind of a cute little piece. And what do Disney princesses do when they go into retirement? Apparently diversify. Why not? that everything in this booth is 50% off and they had a little decorative leather horse. Now these were sold sort of as a tourist item but as a decor piece it's still you know a 40 to 50 dollar item that's why they've got it marked at 45 but half price that's 25 bucks so could be something that would look good on the shelf. You might have to bring that one back with me. Headed up to the second floor. There's three stories here. It's 100,000 square feet. Like, that's a big place. Um, still not found anything that's really jumping out at me yet. I'm hoping with 100,000 square feet that I can't be that picky, can I? It's a relatively new slot machine. It says, as is. Maybe this was somebody's lucky machine and they decided to bring it home from the casino. 195 bucks, as is. Now you guys know that I like old advertising signs. This is a nice early, oh yeah, you know, 1950s Pepsi Cola sign. I almost said Coca-Cola. Clearly it's Pepsi. Don't get mad at me, Coke or Pepsi fans. Um, it's embossed, which is nice, which means it's raised. So you can feel, to check and see something like this is original, you kind of look to see how it was manufactured. Was it meant to be put up on a wall? Yes, it's got the screw holes there. Um, does it have telltale signs of age? They can fake a lot of this, but this is a really big sign. It's probably four or five feet across. Um, so a lot of forgers aren't gonna try and do something this, of this scale. Sadly, it's delaminating a lot. The paint is peeling off of it. So that's gonna hugely affect its value. And it had a spot, you can kind of see down below there where the store's name would have been on there. But, you know, $600, that's not, a, that's not an unfair retail price for a sign like that. Um, but getting something like that home back to my shop would be a little difficult. Um, there's also a little French Canadian 7-Up sign. A little thermometer in there. But you can see the, I don't know if you can see or not, but the, the barometer is broken. So that's probably why they have the $100 price tag on it. I guess we're not that far from Michigan. I end up with one of your Centennial license plates here in Canada. And there are certainly people who collect different genres. This is an area that's just dedicated to everything Coca-Cola. We talked Pepsi a couple minutes ago, but Coke outpaced Pepsi probably tenfold in terms of their marketing with licensing on everything from look, salt and pepper shakers to trays to toy cars to uh, coaster sets, you name it, you can find it with the Coca-Cola logo on it. I think the only other ones that are similar would be Harley Davidson and John Deere. They license the heck out of their names. But there's a lot of Coca-Cola collectors out there always looking to add to their collections. And remember how I was saying Crosley dashboard radios are a good find? Well, this one is priced at $65. Now you think, okay, that is, you know, a third of what they're asking for the ones downstairs, but there's a reason for that. This is a reproduction. In fact, if you look at the side, it's got a cassette player in it, which the original one never had. So Crosley came back to life for a while, did some reproductions. So you have to be very careful with what you're buying. Make sure you get the real thing. That is a seriously massive corner cupboard. It's nice that people do salvage these things because 
Years ago, they would have said restore it completely, but now the patina on an item like that is what people want. So you have nice crisp walls and a beautiful piece like this. It's taken probably a hundred years or more to get that look to it. The upstairs is full, just like the other two floors are, and every vendor has something just a little bit different. We're gonna do a little walk around and see what's on the second floor, or the third floor, I should say, where we are, before we head out for the day. That's the 1960s Cox Tether airplane. You guys ever tried those out as a kid? You hook up a little string to it, and basically it just flies around a big circle. $29 of the box is a very fair price on something like that. So maybe we'll find some good deals now that we're up on the third floor. Now that's something you don't see every day. They said this is a sewing machine for sewing top hats. Very specific. Look at the way the arm moves on there. It comes out and then back down and then back around. Very specific machine. Pretty ornate too. Had some scroll work and stuff on it. Definitely don't see something like that. We are in a area where there was a lot of factories. In fact, the factory we're in was a textile business at one point. That's kind of cool. Well, after doing some shopping around, I was able to find a couple neat things. I ended up going home with this. I decided to have a nice day and get this 1960s era Canada dry thermometer. It's a really neat piece. Thought it would go good at the shop. You can look fun on the wall. It was just winking at me, literally, because it's got two eyeballs smiling at me. So if you're ever in this area, if you're ever in Woodstock, gotta come check this place out. It's 100,000 square feet. They said you're bound to find something here. Um, give them a try. You might find something cool. You guys have a great day for now. Thanks for watching today's episode and have a nice day. Well, bye for now.